Jack and Daxter was a great game, and I hope the PS2 increased sales quite a bit. While I do still maintain the idea that the game was really good, it has most certainly gone down in quality in my opinion over the years. With mediocre combat and platforming, Jack and Daxter gets a little worse on multiple playthroughs. What I had going for it was a low time free world and incredibly pretty visuals. However, in 2002, Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper came out with more interesting worlds and characters, so they had to do something different to compete with these series. The basic history behind this game is that Naughty Dog wasn't sure if Jack would get a sequel, only if the first game was received well, and it was. And in 2001, the same year Jack 1 was released, Grand Theft Auto 3 was released, and the developers at Naughty Dog really enjoyed that game, and felt that they should do something similar for the Jack sequel with a more important and involved storyline with more fleshed out characters. When the game was revealed, its title was Jack and Daxter, A New Legacy Begins, but the final title became Jack 2. This was also my first Jack game, but I never made much progress, however in 2011, I tried to finish it and finally did. I mean, on the front cover we've got images depicting a much more darker game than the original, and Jack has a goatee, Daxter's not in the title, and he's using a goddamn gun. On the back of the box. Travel to a future alive with drama, conflict, and surprises. Friendship, betrayal, love, revenge. Think you're ready? Think again. You will finally know Jack. So what exactly are we dealing with here? Well, let's find out. Story-wise, Jack 2 takes place after the bonus ending of Jack 1. Jack, Daxter, Kira, and Samos have found a precursor Rift Ring and the Rift Rider. Jack activates it, but this causes monsters to come through the portal with a giant one following them. The Rift Rider goes straight through the portal, Jack and Daxter get separated from Kira and Samos, only to find themselves in Haven City, where Jack then gets captured by the Crimson Guard, the main law enforcement. Daxter claims to rescue him soon, but two years have passed and Jack is being tormented with Dark Eco by Baron Praxis, the ruler of Haven City, and his lackey, Errol. They're trying to take down a race known as the Metalheads. Daxter rescues Jack only for one of the first revelations. Say something! Just this once! I'm gonna kill Praxis! Jack now has a voice and is out for revenge against Baron Praxis. However, Jack and Daxter then meet Old Man Kor and a child he's protecting. The Old Man tells Jack and Daxter that they should work for the Underground, a rebel group trying to take down the Baron. From there, they meet a cast of different characters, such as the likable characters like Torn and Tess, or the crime boss crew, the badass Sig and Ashlyn, the spaz Vin, the wise Onan, and her sarcastic interpreter Pecker. Jack 2's storyline really accomplishes being more interesting and complex than Jack 1. Simply because of all these interesting characters, they all have their own personalities and backgrounds and stories to tell. Jack and Daxter are only a small part of a bigger world, and that's what I like in a story, where the, the entire universe doesn't center around the two main characters. Overall, a really good plot with drama, fast-paced action, great animations making the experience more cinematic with plenty of foreshadowing and revelations to keep you on the edge of your seat. But when it comes to spoiler-free discussions, that's all I'll say about that. Gameplay-wise, Jack 2 has one similarity with Jack 1. Jack's entire moveset is back from Jack 1. He can still roll, roll jump, punch, uppercut, dive, spin, jump, and double jump. Jack's double jump has been improved from the last game. Jack has a consistent momentum while jumping, so the platform is greatly improved. Overall, the game has plenty of great puzzles and platforming, Mars 2 being a perfect example of this. The last game's biggest problem was the combat, however this game greatly improves the combat with the Morph Gun, a multi-purpose gun that can take several different forms. First being the scatter gun, a short range weapon for good for taking out big clusters of small enemies. The blaster is my personal favorite, long range, fast, plenty of damage done. This is a go to weapon for pretty much everything. One of the best tactics is to spin jump while shooting the blaster, firing your shots all over the screen. The Vulcan Fury fires a rapid shot, good for dealing damage to enemies with high health bars, and the Peacemaker being the most powerful is good for bosses and huge enemies. With these four guns at our disposal, combat is incredibly simple and effective. Jack also has access to the jet board to increase his ground speed, and I really enjoy pulling off the tricks that can be accomplished. Precursor orbs can be collected again, only this time they are very rare and unlock secrets like big head mode. However, getting these is really tedious. Simply put, the locations to find these are extremely annoying and complicated. Another thing you can do is collect skull gems from defeated metalheads. You trade these for dark powers. What dark powers, you may ask? Well, when Jack was tortured with Dark Eco, his regular Eco powers were stripped away, but what he can do is transform into Dark Jack, a monstrous form of himself that does plenty of damage. You can use Dark Jack when collecting enough Dark Eco, however, don't use Dark Jack unless it's a boss fight. I mean, once you build up enough Dark Energy, you can transform, but once you do so, you can't revert back until the meter is depleted. So Dark Jack is next to useless. The powers you can unlock are abilities like a dive bomb, invincibility, and electric shock. 
Jack 2's structure is like Sly 2. Jack is given a task, goes out to do said task by following signals on the map, rinse and repeat till the game is done. With missions being dedicated to certain areas, it never gets repetitive due to the fact that you explore different areas of each level. However, most of the missions add to the story. However, some of them don't, and are clear filler, like rescuing lurkers or going after metalheads in Haven Forest. But with each one leading to another cutscene, I'd say it's worth it. But We have one major problem to go over. Getting to missions means traveling through Haven City, which is fine at first because the areas are small. However, as the story progresses, Jack gets security passes to get into different parts of the city. On your first playthrough or two, these sections are okay, and it serves as a nice way to relax from challenging missions. However, upon multiple playthroughs, you get tired of this shit. I mean, Haven City is huge, and you're forced to travel from one side to another all the damn time. It takes so long, and you can hijack different vehicles from the citizens. Bigger ones take more damage, but slower and harder to turn. But the smaller ones are faster and easier to control. And these are the ones you have to use. It greatly reduces travel time. And you can also use the Crimson Guard vehicles, the bike being the fastest one in the game, and the bigger one being easily destroyed and turns like shit. But I don't recommend doing it all that often, because stealing these vehicles will put the city on high alert along with pretty much anything else you can do in the city that isn't driving. I know it might seem like I'm harping a lot in the driving, but let me put it like this. My playthrough was about 8 hours. Without this driving shit, that time would be cut in half at least. That's not the only issue with Jack 2 though. You most commonly hear people complain about Jack 2's difficulty. Look. I'm not about to say Jack 2 is really easy. I mean, in 2011, I was spending like 20 to 40 minutes on several missions. However, I will say, this game is nowhere near as hard as people say it is. Not even the dreaded Docks mission gave me much trouble on my first playthrough. But this game's missions do have a few common problems. 1. Crappy checkpoints. And by that, I mean, one checkpoint at the beginning of a stage, die once, and start the whole damn thing over again. 2. No invincibility frames. Get hit once, and you can get hit again and again until Jack is dead. However, Jack 2 does have a better health system, so that's good. 3. Enemies can just fly in from off-screen. And 4. Strict time limits that make doing each mission a pain in the ass. However, none of the regular missions have bothered me as much as it does other people. What does bother me is the races. Jack participates in the city races, and these are some of the most infuriating sections I've ever played. 1. These tracks are extremely hard to navigate. Two. Shortcuts force you to jump over death pits, which you only have a 50-50 shot of surviving through. 3. If you die, you don't just respawn. You have to do it all over again. 4. You know how in every racing game ever, the default amount of laps is 3? Well, Jack 2 doesn't play by those rules, and we instead have 5 fucking laps. Meaning if you're in first place and have been racing for 2.5 minutes close to that finish line, it can be very easily taken away from you in a matter of seconds meaning you have to do the whole two and a half minutes all over again. 5. The race with arrows is also a piece of shit because you have to go through the rings to beat it and miss one and it's over, but if he misses one, the game does not give a shit. Weirdly, the last race is supposed to be the hardest and most climactic and is actually the easiest one in my opinion due to actual shortcuts. The later portions of this game is just where most of the frustration comes from, like the clunky mech suit, the races, which can seriously go back to the abyss of bad game design that they came from, escort missions with incompetent assholes, Everything that would make a mission bad is accounted for in the last two or so hours of Jack 2. Anyway, the bosses are far more interesting and challenging than last time, really taking advantage of the different weapons at your disposal. Graphically, Jack 2 looks great. Firstly, Jack 2 is one of the few PS2 games that is capable of 480p and 16x9 widescreen. The game looks fine otherwise, but it really looks good in progressive scan. The world also tells a story visually, with detailed architecture expanding upon the world of Jack and Daxter. And this game has such a different visual atmosphere from the last game, where we traveled through gorgeous natural environments, and in this game we traveled through man-made environments with a real post-apocalyptic atmosphere, really helping expand the dark tone. When we go through Haven Forest, we are greeted with beautiful natural visuals again. The soundtrack is also improved from last time, while it's still not something I'd listen to, I'd say it gets the job done. So with that, we've reached the spoiler section, so skip to this point in the video to not be spoiled. Throughout the story, all kinds of bombs are dropped. Firstly, we find out that Ashlyn is the Baron's daughter, but wants to go against him. Jack meets a mechanic that is actually Kira trying to build a new Rift Rider to get everyone back to their own time period. We find out that this story takes place in the future and meet the leader of the Underground who is actually Samos, but not the Samos we know, but a younger version. Sig works for True but doesn't actually want to be on his side for some reason. Daxter likes Tess and vice versa. Owen and Pecker tell Jack of Mara's tomb, Mara is the creator of Haven City, 
Mars Tomb holds the Precursor Stone, and Baron Praxis is looking for it. And we learn more about the Precursor's backstories, and we almost get the stone, but Praxis gets it because Torrin told him, because Praxis threatened Ashland's death. And all of the underground have been kidnapped, and we set out to rescue them, with only the old Samos and the young Samos being there. Crew betrays the city and allows Metalheads to get inside, but we find that their leader is Kor, the old man. Vin is killed, as is Sig, and Jack and Dax to go to finish their Metalheads, while Ashland and Torrin, as well as the Crimson Guard, fight off the Metalheads. Kor tells Jack that the Precursor Stone contains the Precursor Life Force, and only the kid from earlier, who is actually Jack, in a younger form, has the ability to open it. Jack defeats Kor and the young Jack and Samos use Akira's Rift Rider to go back to the time of Jack 1. All of these things make a lot more sense if you're playing the game than if you haven't, by the way. And everything ends happy for now. Overall, Jack 2, in my opinion, is a vast improvement over the Precursor Legacy. That game is really good, but had a few flaws that got more and more annoying as the game went on and bothered me more and more upon multiple playthroughs. Jack 2, while having the abysmal races and hub, the core platforming is more satisfying, the game has good puzzle elements, better combat, and a better health system. Jack 2 was also met with high praise and got Naughty Lark started on their path of cinematic gaming continued by Uncharted and The Last of Us. So I definitely recommend that you play Jack 2. It's a great game, much better than Jack 1. And with that, I'll see you guys for the next review where we'll be talking about Jack 3.